Jerry Seib is the Washington Bureau Chief of the Wall Street Journal. He's covering the primaries and joins us from Washington. Jerry, good morning. Good morning, Charlie. Does Donald Trump simply have to unify the Republican Party in order to go forward and have a chance to win this election? Well, I think at some level he has to unify the party. Uh, I, you know, I think one of the things he has to do, though, is convince the party that he's actually leading a different and better Republican Party. I mean, that's what he's really trying to do here. He's really trying to turn the Republican Party from a party that's really run by movement conservatives to one that's more populist. And that's a very painful change, as it turns out, con because conservatives who really have shaped the party to their image and likeness for 20, 25 years now have kind of figured out maybe he's not one of us, and that's a very painful transition. So I think there may be limits to how much unifying can happen here. But Jerry, he differs with Paul Ryan on almost every major issue. And then just yesterday, after some very tough questioning on the Sunday shows, Trump says that he supports higher taxes on the wealthy. He supports raising the minimum wage. Is he a Republican? Is he a conservative? It sounds more like Democratic proposals. Well, look, I mean, this is, the, this is the key now. I think we're past the point where the issue is Donald Trump's temperament. Conservatives are worried about his policies. And so Paul Ryan really does believe in policy uh, prescriptions that conservatives want. And so they look at Donald Trump and they say, well, he's not with us on free trade. He's kind of got a, he's got a different view of immigration. Uh, his tax plan we like, but on the other hand, he now basically says everything is negotiable. So is he one of us? And Paul Ryan really embodies that belief. And I think it's interesting that Paul Ryan said not... I won't support Donald Trump. He says, I'm not ready to yet. That, to me, at least suggests what he wants to do this week is talk to Donald Trump and maybe extract some promises or at least some sense of what it is Donald Trump is really going to stand for on the issues that count to conservatives. And Paul Ryan, as I said, is the embodiment of those conservative uh, ideas. Well, Donald Trump said on one of the shows yesterday that he felt a little blindsided by Paul Ryan. What do you think needs to happen between the two of them when they meet on Thursday? Well, look, I think the, for one thing, you've got to sort of get past this idea that maybe, maybe Donald Trump is going to dump Paul Ryan as chairman of the convention. That's a pretty ch tough thing yes. to do. He floated that thought, idea out there, though, Jerry. <laughs> well, I know, I yeah. know. But, I mean, you, like, we all thought they were headed toward a really raucous convention in Cleveland when it was going to be contested, and then all of a sudden it looked like that's not going to happen. It's not going to. But now we're going to have a raucous convention for a totally different reason. I'm not sure that's in their interest. So there's that issue. But there is also really the kind of the question of, what do you stand for? What do you stand for on taxes? What's your position uh, going to be? Uh, bottom line position on national security issues. I think there's a lot of need for clarity. And one of the things that people have talked about is Donald Trump's need to go out, make some serious policy speeches and address these questions. And nobody's going to be listening more closely than conservatives. Well, let's just say it's never dull. Jerry Seib, we thank you very much for joining us this morning. Happy good, to be with you. Really good to see you.